I was like, you know what? That was it was he did enough to win that. It was seven five either way. Right. I had him winning seven five. But you go off of that fight and then you go into a fight with Regis Prograde, and I mean lights out right. from beginning to end. From beginning so, so look, you say, yo, this is a wash. Right. This dude longer than, than Taint. Right. He faster than Taint. Right. He got he got the footwork. He got there's no way Ryan Garcia touches him. Right. But here's the thing. They got they got history from the amateur right so it's things that ryan may have experienced and knows from way back then mm -hmm. that he can tap into right in recent days there has been total madness around the dream versus flash fight largely due to ryan who scares fans with his strange posts on social media however no one intends to cancel a big event which means it's time to break it down from a to z and choose a winner Friends, today's video will be dedicated to the technical breakdown of the fight between Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia. Please don't forget about the likes, comments with four words, and subscribe to the channel. Here we go. At this point, the careers of these young boxing talents are at completely different stages, although just three years ago, it seemed that they both had a bright future ahead. In 2021, King Rai had a great performance in which he knocked out Olympic champion Luke Campbell in epic fashion and became the interim WBC champion. That same night, straight from the ring, he began to call people out. Of course, among those who Flash wanted to beat up first were Tank and Devon, who already held the title of one of the major organizations at that time. Although Ryan managed to fight the former in 2023, he got to Haney only now. Over the past few years, the lives and careers of the guys have undergone serious changes. After knocking out Campbell, Garcia won two more times, after which he was crushed by his eternal rival Javante Davis and decided to move up to the 140 pound division. There, he managed to have a good showing and defeated a pretty strong opponent in the face of Oscar Duarte. Although there are still many questions about Flash's return. Haney, in the meantime, soon participated in championship battles in the lightweight division where he faced Australian George Cambosis, who not so long ago unexpectedly stopped undefeated Teofimo Lopez. The champions had two fights and Dream won both of them in a dominating style. Thus, Haney became the undisputed champion of the division at just 24 years old, but instead of resting on his laurels, he decided to continue building his legacy. To do so, he took a fight with the most awkward boxer in the world, former champion Vasily Lomachenko, and albeit with some difficulty, managed to beat him by a decision. With this victory, Haney finally solidified his status as the king of the lightweight division, but instead of subsequent title defenses, he decided to follow Garcia's example and move up to the 140 pound category. In the new division, Devon immediately got a fight with champion Regis Progress and delivered one of the best performances of his career. Devon was elusive as a shadow and moreover, he constantly countered his opponent with hard punches, which is why he won the fight by a landslide. It is quite possible that the young boxer's plans included another undisputed title, but before facing other champions, he decided to end one long-standing conflict and took a fight with Ryan Garcia. For those who have forgotten or even didn't know, the score in their amateur fights is 3-3 and this match will finally tip the scales in favour of the best one. But who has the better chance of winning? To answer that, we need to thoroughly analyse the boxers and we'll start with their technique. Technique First, let's assess Ryan's technical arsenal and there's indeed a lot to look at. At first, Flash's style is absolutely inflexible and focused exclusively on pressure with the left hook, but this judgment is fundamentally wrong. Yes, Garcia likes to work as the first number and indeed feels more comfortable in attack, but at the same time, he understands when it's worth giving the initiative to the opponent and focusing on counterattacks. And you definitely don't want to get caught by this guy's counterattacks. Not only are the punches very fast and not always noticeable, but they are also endowed with power that is palpable even in the super lightweight division. Of course, Ryan's signature move is his deadly hook, which flies towards the opponent at any convenient opportunity. Everything is going well? Garcia throws a left hook. 
Is he being pressed to the ropes and forced to back down? The side hook comes into play again. It seems that such an emphasis on one punch makes Ryan's tactic too predictable, but tell that to each of his last opponents. That really hurt when they graze you off the temple. Oh, and a left hand. All these guys knew what they should be afraid of, but still, each of them, except for Tank, was stunned at least once due to the left hook. 100 amateur wins, hard right hand that landed and shook Duno. Garcia able to land that right now. He got he goes. Speaking of the left hand. I'm surprised at how effectively Garcia uses it in his latest performances. The boxer began to actively work with the jab and keep the opponent at a distance while adding a powerful left uppercut to his arsenal. Considering his rather good anthropometry, Ryan should have started doing this much earlier, but it's good that he came to this at least now. In terms of movement, Flash of course is far from the elite of the division, including the future opponent, but his progress is also noticeable in this aspect. It seems that the loss to Javante helped him realize his weakness, and now King Rai is actively working on them, becoming a more versatile boxer. Devin Haney and his technique Damn, talking about how Dream conducts his fights is always difficult for me, but this is by no means a reproach, quite the opposite. Haney always works so cleanly, accurately and pragmatically that I just have nothing to criticize. Every appearance of the undefeated champion in the ring means only one thing, his opponent will get a private lesson on classic boxing. Lightning fast work with straight punches, constant protection of the head with the right hand, lowered left hand and as a result almost unreadable jab, high class footwork, all this is Devon. His classic stance and polished basic techniques become a headache for both lovers of classic and unorthodox guys like Regis Progres or Jojo Diaz. Most of all, of course, it's amazing how this guy works on his feet. In my opinion, Haney has the fastest and most active footwork at 140 pounds and no one will be able to match him in this aspect anytime soon. Using his legs, Devon both defends, cutting corners and pulling back and attacks, instantly closing the distance with the clueless opponent. Although Dream's footwork is quite versatile, his style is mainly focused on pressure and fighting from the center of the ring. Most often, Haney simply pushes the opponent where he needs using sharp punches and constant movements, but sometimes this is not enough. Then the champion can use his secret weapon, clinch, in which he is surprisingly very good. Many of Devon's opponents noted that he is incredibly physically strong and Haney himself knows this, so he can resort to brute force when necessary. Considering his skills and physical qualities, I can undoubtedly call Dream one of the most versatile and developed boxers of our time. For Ryan, this does not mean anything good, but it is too early to write him off. Stamina and Mental Attitude in terms of cardio, there is not just a gap between the guys, but a real big canyon. Garcia has never been able to brag about his incredible endurance, but this is not difficult to explain. Flash's style is focused on aggressive exchanges at medium range, and given his power, such episodes most often ended badly for his opponents. In other words, the guy just doesn't count on playing for a long time and tries to finish the opponent at any cost before the gas tank runs out. Usually, the prospect shows the first signs of fatigue after the middle of the confrontation, but it is dangerous to fall for that as Ryan's hands still present a threat and harbor serious knockout power. In turn, Haney's style is just focused on long shootouts, so there are never any issues with his cardio. Yes, sometimes Dream can take a couple of minutes to catch his breath, but right after that, he goes into battle with new forces and is almost no different from himself in the first round. The aspect of stamina definitely goes to Devon. You all know very well that lately, there have been real chaos in Ryan's head. Shadow government, Bohemian Grove, aliens, abductions, all this has firmly settled in Garcia's mind and has not given him peace for a couple of weeks. We don't know what exactly caused these unhealthy ideas, but the fact remains. Now, Flash is clearly not thinking about the fight. As for Haney, everything is in perfect order for him, and there is no hint that he is not fully focused on his performance. 
I am sure that even now, when Garcia is not himself and will obviously not fight in an optimal form, Devon continues tough training preparing for a fight with the best version of King Rai. The mentality also goes to the undisputed champion. Conclusion I wouldn't want to give anyone false hopes, so I'll speak openly. Even in the best shape of his career, with a full camp and the right mental attitude, Ryan Garcia would have beaten Devon in one, at most two fights out of ten. All those who think that the experience of amateur fights will somehow help Flash to win are greatly mistaken. Since the last time the guys crossed gloves as amateurs, almost a decade has passed, and they both have changed a lot during this time, especially Haney. His progress is simply incredible, and now it's not even clear if the champion has any ceiling at all. In a fight against the strongest version of Garcia, Haney would still be much faster on his feet, much more accurate, and wouldn't get tired, constantly pressing. If Flash somehow managed to take a few starting rounds, after the equator, he would still face hard times. Devon would simply outwork him in every round and might even finish him as Ryan's chin is far from the strongest. And we are talking about the best version of Garcia in the perfect condition. Now, instead of this, Ryan at best, there will be a 25-year-old guy pumped up with alcohol and weed who seems to have lost all motivation to fight. From Garcia's interviews, it becomes clear that he has already made fabulous money in his short career, amounting to tens of millions of dollars, and he no longer needs to try to fight for the championships. The guy already has everything that an average person could wish for, and he just takes the best from life without thinking about the consequences. I don't want to admit it, but it seems that the end of the career of the fastest boxer is not that far away, and Haney will be just the first nail in the coffin. What's the percentage ratio? If Ryan were in the right shape, I would rate everything as 70 to 30 in favor of Haney, and now the balance of power looks like 95 to 5. Garcia can win only if Haney breaks his arm during the fight or gets disqualified. Perhaps Flash will also somehow bring a gun to the arena and force the opponent to surrender, but this is unlikely. In all other scenarios, Garcia simply has no chance to beat Devon. The best thing he can do now is to work hard with psychologists and try to quit bad habits. The guy still has potential and can make progress. That's why it's so sad to watch him squander the best years of his career and bury his reputation. But again, all the above is my personal opinion and I express it based on my beliefs. Okay guys, now I'm waiting for your opinion in the comments. Who will win? Let's have a discussion.